Dr. Christina Kabash, and I'm here to talk to you today about ankle sprains. There are 23,000 ankle sprains per day in the United States. An ankle sprain is typically an inversion injury where the foot rolls inward and you land on the outside of the foot. It causes pain and swelling in the outside of the foot, often the inside of the foot as well. The most common ligaments injured are usually the CFL pictured here and the ATFL pictured there. And here's a better graph of the CFL and the ATFL. And this is 85% of ankle sprain injuries. Uh, the other ankle injuries can injure the syndesmosis, which is the ligament that connects the big shin bone to the skinny bone on the outside of the leg, or a ligament on the inside called the deltoid. Uh, patients who have a high arched foot, pictured here, are more likely to suffer ankle sprain type injuries. Ouch! I rolled my ankle. Can you put weight on it? No. See a medical professional who can evaluate and obtain x-rays. Yes. Rice. That means rest, ice, compression, and elevation. If no improvement in 24 to 72 hours, then uh, see a medical professional for evaluation. Dealing with acute injuries. So rest, ice, compression, which is typically an ACE bandage or an uh, elastic ankle brace, and elevation. If not better in 48 to 72 hours or cannot bear weight, see a doctor. Why? Because a differential diagnosis of ankle pain, and I'm not going to go into these, involves all of these diagnoses. Treatment of an acute ankle sprain, again, rest, ice, compression, elevation. Rest avoids further stress on the injury so that healing can take place. Most people sleep seven to nine hours per night. Human growth hormone is mainly released while sleeping. As we age, less is released, so that is why we have longer recoveries, less human growth hormone. Ice. Never apply ice on bare skin. It can actually burn it. The guideline for ice is 20 minutes on, 20 minutes off, and again, there should be something between the ice and you. Gel packs, bags of frozen peas, ice cube water mixes work well. And these days there are cooling units that are cold enough to stop the inflammation without burning the skin that you can just leave on and cycle on and off. Ice stops inflammatory pathways from working and decreases blood flow and swelling. Removing the ice and allowing the body part to warm allows fresh blood to return, flush the inflammatory products away and bring in new blood for healing. Compression can be an ACE bandage or an elastic brace. Compression squeezes the fluid out of the soft tissues and back into the blood supply, and it reduces the dull, achy pain and stiffness that is caused by swelling. Elevation above the heart. Anti-inflammatories are good in the acute stage, but they're a double-edged sword, all right? They're good because they can stop and slow inflammation and decrease pain. But if used chronically, they may actually slow healing. They may mask pain, increasing the risk of injury. You think it feels fine, so you walk on it. Uh, and also, it can cause bleeding ulcers, high blood pressure, and kidney issues in some patients. Treatment of ankle sprains. You may need to be non-weight-bearing for a short period of time with either crutches or a rolling knee walker. Uh, immobilization in a cam boot may be helpful or potentially even a brace that you can wear in your sneaker. Bad ankle sprains may require physical therapy. Physical therapy to increase strength, range of motion, balance. Additional techniques can also be done, such as uh, grasted, uh, e-stem, and iontophoresis. Preventing ankle sprains is important. Okay, and so how can you do this? Exercises that increase your core balance and strength, and exercises that increase the side-to-side -side motion of the muscles. So not everyone has one of those fancy bat boards at home, but what you can do is take a stack of towels and practice standing on the towels. Make sure you have something to grab onto, like a dresser or a doorway though. Severe ankle sprains can be seen on x-ray. So this is a normal ankle, and this is an ankle that has had the syndesmosis ligament ruptured, and you can see the talus is acting as a wedge to split these two bones apart. Traditionally, we fixed it with two screws or one screw that would go across and hold it together. 
and then we typically remove them uh, approximately four months after the ligament had rehealed. Alternatively, you can use uh, fiber tape uh, wires that go from one side of the ankle to the other, uh, are not visible on x-ray, uh, and typically do not need to be removed. So, returning to activity, the golden rule, discomfort is okay, pain is not. So you want to avoid uh, pain causes compensation, which can alter gait. Uh, you don't want to form bad habits or cause compensatory injuries. Again, discomfort is okay, pain is not. So what's the difference between discomfort and pain? All right, that's pain, gritting your teeth, clenching your fists, or curling your toes. If you are doing any of these things, that is pain. Pain changes your gait, makes you limp, and can even affect your breathing. So, as you return to activity, you may want to try some cross-training, which means decreases in intensity, pace, frequency, and duration. Ice and elevate after every workout to prevent and treat inflammation. And some uh, forms of cross-training may be using the elliptical with your feet flat, rowing, biking, swimming, yoga, Pilates, and strength training. Low-impact pool work is excellent if you have access to a pool. Uh, ankle sprains in tennis and pickleball I commonly see uh, in my office. They're typically associated with lunging, leaping, and leaning during these sports. Very, very important for uh, preventing ankle sprains is to wear court shoes. A lot of people will uh, skip getting the court shoes and they'll just go out on the court. However, running shoes do not have as much side-to-side -side stability because uh, for a running shoe, it's important to have a lot of heel cushioning and roll forward. They do not allow the foot to uh, slip sideways, as this would be bad for running. Tennis shoes have a, a great deal of lateral side-to-side -side support and stability, and they allow uh, the shoes to slide sideways. So if the shoe doesn't slide sideways, you're going to catch the edge and roll. Uh, we see ankle sprains from golf, usually in the lead ankle. Uh, the lead ankle acts as a pivot and supports the body's movement during the downswing. However, an ankle sprain in the back, perhaps from some other activity, is more likely to affect your swing since it acts as a driving force for rotation. And if you do have an ankle injury or an ankle sprain in golf, widen your stance for better balance, especially if you're on a slope or in a sand trap, so that the foot makes flat, solid contact prior to your swing. And of course, brace if you have a history of ankle instability. So, when to see a medical professional if you can't place pressure on the ankle, if the pain is getting worse and not better in 24 to 48 hours, and if you have recurrent ankle sprains. Thank you for watching this video.